So I, uh, I opened it up for my, the readers of my blog to, uh, to submit questions that I might ask to you. <laughs> okay. And uh, there, there was, there was a lot of hostility. And uh -oh. I think that my first question is just going to be, how do you, like, I write about environmental technology, yep. and I think that there was sort of a slowdown at GM, um, maybe a little bit too comfortable in what you could do and what you were ready to do um, for a while. Is what, what are you doing to counteract that? Like, when are my readers going to be not upset with you anymore? <laughs> yeah. Why are your readers upset with us? Um, they're upset because of the vault, or, they're not upset because of the vault. I was say, wait a second, I'm, I'm really not upset. <laughs> <actually. laughs> they're upset because of the EV1 still. They're upset because they... Hey, look, this is 10 years. you got to well, get that, and, okay. and, Sorry. I mean, and they're, they're upset because they don't think that the cars you making are quality. Like, And it may be that they just don't have... That their, their memories are too long or that their cars are too old. But... I think it's probably some of that. So what you need to do is tell them to, if they want a mid-sized car, go try a... Chevy Malibu, JD Power's number one in quality, highest fuel economy in its segment, and by far the best looking mid-sized car. So tell them to go try that and see if they're still mad at us. If they are, I may have to come up with another idea after that. We offer a mild hybrid version, which isn't very expensive. And I, it, it's, it's really not, um, to be honest, not an accurate conclusion to uh, say that we that our products, I mean, just sort of against the, the mainstream products, aren't competitive fuel efficiency wise. I would say we don't win in every category, but we win in a lot of categories. So we're very competitive on the base case. As far as new technologies, okay, I mean, EV1, sorry, but to be fair, those who, I mean, who lived it as I did, so we produced them and then people didn't want them. We, we couldn't, our volume, we had a volume forecast like this. Our volume went like this and just leveled off. People wouldn't. I mean, after you got to certain people were passionate about the technology, and there were some, we just couldn't grow the business at all. Um, did we make a mistake in doing a purpose-built electric car? Was the state of the battery technology not advanced enough then? I don't know. I mean, I do think things have changed. But we have what we've used, learned from that. We have been able to apply to what you know what's going to be in the Volt, which I think does respond to at least one of the biggest. Uh, complaints that we had with the EV1, which was Bob's long story about range anxiety today, stated better than I could. And then, you know, you look at uh, things like, um, you know, commitment to um, explore other new technologies, whether it's fuel cells or others. We don't in every single category win, but we're up there with, with you know, in almost every single one. And, you know, hybrids, okay started slower in part because the EV1 experience was that, hey, people aren't going to pay extra, um, you know, if you don't give them the equal value. But, you know, we'll have, we'll have eight hybrids out, eight hybrid models out this year in our two-mode system. It's expensive for us to produce, but it is the most sophisticated hybrid system. So tell your readers to give us a chance. I promise they, they, won't, they won't be as hostile. Yeah. Uh, just a quick question. I mean, yeah. One of the concerns that I'm hearing a lot is, with what's going on right now, there's rumors that, that certain nameplates may get dropped, that certain lines are going to be pared down. And how do you, in terms of standing behind the vehicles that are out there now, if someone buys something now and then if that line gets discontinued or whatever, behind warranties and, and those kind of things, I know those are some concerns people are having. How are we addressing that? We have an example. You know, we did close down Oldsmobile. Mm -hmm. And so what we do is we, you know, completely stand behind the warranties. And not only that, even if down the road, we don't have old we'll have Oldsmobilers dealers anymore, which we don't. Then all the other GM brands can service those products. So um, I, it's not something you like to have experience in, but we do. And you know, you, people can be assured that they will have uh, warranty from the GM system, and the warranty claims will be will be covered. Mm -hmm. question yeah, here. Rick Billboard with EV Bill World. This sort of the follow-on to that. You're obviously developing a plan to show to Congress. Um, we actually developed one and we showed it to Congress. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay, and you, but you're going to be showing a final version of that like on right. the 17th. Right. So could you sort of help us understand what do you see General Motors being like in, let's say, a decade from now, 2019? What is your vision of what GM is going to be at that point? Well, I think, um, I do think the automotive industry after this, you know, sort of difficult, even around the world now, the last six months, I suspect we'll get back on some sort of growth plan, um, probably much more aggressive in the emerging markets than than here, but you know some sort of reasonable semblance of the normal market here in Western Europe. 
And I think all that is going to lead to continued pressure on uh, energy availability, particularly petroleum. And I do think the, you know, all of the environmental issues around uh, petroleum use are not going to go away. So I think 10 years from today, there's going to be a very different mix of, of energy sources for vehicles. And I would uh, be surprised if uh, batteries don't play a big role. Um, and I would be surprised if biofuels don't play a big role. In 10 years, will fuel cells be playing a big role? If Dr. Larry Burns were here, he would say yes. I might put some caution on, you know, I'm not sure my crystal ball is that clear. So I think, I, I think the biggest change we'll see over the next 10 years is, is the propulsion systems being used in vehicles. Um, and, you know, GM specific, obviously, we've said through this process in Congress, we're going to have to kind of get out of a very long period of time of our history where our labor cost was a huge competitive and, and the cost of the benefits, not, not really anybody's fault, but we're a huge competitive disadvantage and basically fixing that now. So that's going to provide massive amounts of resources that we have not had. I mean, you all have heard my comments. We spent, we paid $103 billion over the last 15 years for um, to fund pensions and pay post-retiree health care. Um, once we're out of those businesses, um, and that's we can do a lot with $7 billion a year, frankly, from the standpoint of investing in technology, building brands, you, you can just imagine. So, you know, I would expect once we get through this difficult period, the basic structure of the business is going to really enable us to have resources to, to be, if anything, even more aggressive in, in, in some of these new areas we'd like to be able to explore. What sales volume do we have to get back to for you to get some breathing room? Uh, 11 million is not going to cut it. Well, 11 is tough at today's structure, that's true. Um, we had said in the uh, submission to Congress that we would be able to be profitable at 12 and a half to 13 million units. Um, What's which, your market share at that point? I'd assume, think about 20% share. Um, you hit on a good point. It's not just size of the industry. It's how many units you produce. Um, so it's the interplay of those two. And, and I would still argue that from a long-term trend perspective, 12 and a half, 13 is a low number for the U.S. I don't necessarily believe that we'll get back up. If we were having this conversation a year and a half ago, we would have identified trend then at more like 17, 17 and a half main units. I don't think we're going to – I don't think that's the right trend number to be working off now because I think, of, you know, the – Part of the high industries over the last eight years, other than last year, were attributed to very cheap credit in the system, I mean, not unlike housing. And that, that's, I think it's going to be a while before people forget that. And, um, you know, leasing, I think probably overtrained on leasing. And I think, um, you know, as we take capacity out and, you know, apply the new technologies, they probably are going to, I mean, for example, if you put a turbocharged engine, it costs more than a you know, a conventional engine, so it drives some product costs. Presumably the consumer will see the benefit. So those would suggest perhaps industry is a little more modest than what we used to be seeing. On the other side, um, you, you know, you do have population growth in, in the U.S., and we are, we are well, sales here for the last um, six months at least have been well below replacement level, and they will be this year, so at some point we'll get some of that back. So. Isn't there a reliability dividend in there that since cars have become more reliable? Sure. How many people does that take out of the market that you would have counted on? That's accounted for in that in that statement. Um, but, I mean, it's clear the average life. I mean, I was shocked. I uh, was looking at something the, uh, last night or yesterday. The average uh, car on the road. Guess guess how many years the average car on the road today in the U.S. has been on the road? 11. 12. Oh, I was shocked. It was like almost 10. That shocked me. <laughs> <laughs> structure less. Structure about 8. But uh, that's the average vehicle. Um, so that could that could trend up a little bit, but it, you know I think you know you look at that against population, but I think it's a good argument why we shouldn't be saying oh this trend should be 17 and a half going to 20. I think it's going to be low low. So bottom line is we uh, you know we need to be able to get our break even down. We said we wanted it to be you know in the 12 and a half range. We obviously have to look given what you said about the market this year, which I can't dispute, and see if we can cut that further. Okay. 